Right, we have finished the configurations, the basic IP address routing is done. Verification we have done, we are able to ping from router 10 to router 1, which is in OSPF domain. Router 10 is in area 20. I am pinging from area 20 to area 10, router 1, which is 1.1.1.1. I got rigid ready. Likewise, 10 is connected to the internet. So through internet, I can go and ping R5, which is another WAN side of my autonomous system, which proves that I have even WAN reachability. This end of my office can go through the WAN to ping this end of my office. I have reachability. Now, if I will redistribute from EIGRP to OSPF. Both on router 10 and router 5. Type 5, let's say, will be now given by two different ASBR. Router 5 is in one ASBR, router 10 is also another ASBR. Both are going to give the same networks external networks I'm going to enable pathcast so that whichever the closest my autonomous system will use as an exit exit whichever the exit closer For example, for router 1, the closest exit is router 5. If you have E1, only then you will have the cost calculated. If you got E2, then according to R1, going to R10 and R5, we both will have same cost. Do you agree? Okay. Let's do the redistribution, then we will discuss more further. I mean, I mean, I mean, router 10. Before I, I do some redistribution, I want to take you to router 1 and show you the routing table and the database. When I type show IP, show IP route EIG, show IP route OSPF, I, d I see here only O and IA. I don't see any E1 or E2, which means no redistribution so far done. That you and me know it very well. We did not do redistribution. I will also show you the database, show IP OSP database. Even in database, if you see, there is only type 1, type 2, and type 3. You don't have type 4 and 5. Because there is no ASPR so far. Now, let me redistribute on router 10 first, okay? Not on 5. Let me do it on first on 10. Router OSPF 1, redistribute EIGRP 10 subnets, metric type, I'm going to say 1. So the default metric is 20. 20 plus, how many wires do you see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Let's see. Router 1. Now you can see 90. Why, you know? Each link is 10. Cost is 10. Ethernet. Speed is 
10 meg. For 10 meg, OSPF cost is 10. 100 by 10 is what? 10 only, no? <coughs> so 20 is the default metric while redistributing. When you don't give metric, it is going to take 20 as the default metric for external. Plus, there are seven links. Each link is 10. So 90. If I will, if I will redistribute on total five, what will happen? Exiting via five, yeah, yeah. Before that, let me quickly finish this one thing which I started. When I redistribute on 5, the default is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30, 40, 50, 60. So R1 will decide to go via 5 instead of 10. Right now it is going via 10. Show IP OSP of database this is the command that you want to see. See, right now who is giving? Who is giving? 10. Yeah. Right now, 10 is giving. And what is the cost? 90. Isn't it? Now, let me go to router 5, redistribute. Router OSPF 1, redistribute EIGRP 10, metric. One. Now I would like to go to router one. Check the routing table. Now, if you see, the cost is sixty, as I said, which means it is exiting via five. How do you know? You will see a path given by both. But we are not sure via which it is going because you have topology, you can say, yeah, it is going via 5 because you know each link cost is 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40 plus 2 redistribution. Right. Now what is next? Where it is running where it is. No, it, it, that is database. It will store both. It's a link state protocol. Man, it has to have link state information of both. Not some network, all network. You see duplicate. You're learning from this ASP as well as this ASP. It's a link state routing protocol. You should have both. So that, so that, if one, one goes down, immediately it will swap with the other one without you knowing it. You understand? Hmm. That's why OSPF is recommended. It's highly recommended. Always highly available. Now, Just understand the type of area in OSPF. Why you are doing unnecessary research now? Don't go and it's not mandatory for you to ping. You see the route, no? Definitely it will not ping because we did not do the other way. Why you want to do that like a small uh, CCNA guy? That you can do it later in home. Now, let's learn. let us learn stub first. I'm going to make area 10 as a stub because area 20 cannot be made as a stub. 
Area 20 cannot be made as a stub or totally stub. Why? Why I cannot? Yeah. Because there is ASPR. So, going to route one, before I configure stub, I want to show you the benefit of stub. For that, show IP route summary. Do you have a paper and pen next to you now? Take the pen and paper and say router one. Router one total memory consumed is eight one seven two. All right, that is that is enough. Okay, that is enough. Now after I configure stub, no, you will not see this seven routes. Why? I'm going to stop type five coming in. You understand? Instead, this will be only increased because there will be a default route type three. This will become eleven, and this will become zero, and this will become a small number. At least two thousand. It will reduce minimum. This is number of memory bytes consumed. You understood? Let's configure stub now. Router OSPF one. Area ten is a stub. I have to repeat the same command on all the route. Only then the neighbor will come up. Area 10 is a stub. Okay. Now let us go back to router one and verify. First, I want to show you the database. Show IP OSPF database. Are you ready? You see, there is a default type three LSA default route coming, which was not there earlier. This is type three, and there is no type four and type five. There is no type four and type five. Now, what is next? One minute. Now, let's check the size of the routing table. No, before that, I want to check the routing table itself. Show IP route. OSPF. You can see here, there is a default route added to the routing table. Even here on the top, if you see, gateway of lost resort is set, which means default route. Huh? Hmm. And you see there is no E or E1 or E2. As I said earlier, when I type show IP route summary, are you ready? You're typing something. You see here, there is no external. And earlier this was 10, now it became 11. And what was the number earlier? Hmm. Uh, almost 2,000 plus got reduced. Now let us make it as totally stub. Now what I want you is, you see here, you see 11 here. This will become one. This will become one. Means when you make a area as a totally stub, what will happen? It will dock. Ah, this is, the four and five is already dropped, forget about it. Now, this is type three. So, 10 routes will get dropped. Let's go to router three and make it as totally stuck. You see, 
router ospf1 remove this and then say area 10 stub no summary stub is 4 and 5 no summary is 3 so router 1 check the database first you see you still have this default route and you still have this type 3 which means still not properly converged you need to wait now you see gone now no 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 need. see now it gone you see now it gone and the database is small now let us check the routing table even the routing table is very small o means type 1 type 2 OIA means default route. Nothing else. Let's check the size of the routing table. You see, this has become 1. This is still continuing as 0. And initially it was 8,000 change. Now it is 2,005, not even 2,400. So, big difference, right? Okay. So we have seen stub and totally stub.